Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey, and have we really crossed the line when we're ministering to people? Like, we've forgotten that they have souls too, I'm sure. How do we do the next right thing when it comes to this? Well, we've got angel specialist Debbie Giorgiani and religious demonologist Adam Bly to talk all about it. Good morning, Debbie and Adam. Thank you so much, Keith. We're so glad to be here on this Thursday edition of The Next Right Thing. I am Debbie Giorgiani with Adam Bly. We are the co-hosts of The Spirit World, heard on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. Please tune in. We really want to hear from you. It's an open forum. So if you have anything you want to say about these particular The Next Right Thing episodes, you can call in to open forum and we can can address it. Absolutely. But Adam, we're really talking about a, a healthy sense of respect for one another today. And you and I, before we prepared for this segment, we were just sharing back and forth of what's going on in the world. It has been going on for quite some time, but you know, it seems like in the last 10 years, it has really um, ramped up a bit uh, on the sense of, of really just attacking one another every single time someone speaks to the point where you just back somebody down and they don't want to talk at all. They just want to go into a corner because they don't want to be erased. They don't want to be canceled. And, and we really want to discuss it here on Morning Joy because I'm even noticing it in podcasts. And, and I will tell you, Adam, that there are a lot of um, podcasters in the Catholic Christian world that are getting a lot of views and people are saying, hooray, keep going, you're doing great. But their, their, um, their lack of re- respect for where a person is at, for their understanding of, of where a person is, is how, how f- uh, fast or, or how a person is progressing spiritually, I think is missing. And when mm-hmm. you do that, you're not allowing a person a chance. You're kind of bullying a person into, into being a certain way, even if they have the truth. You know, if, we have, if you have the truth, that's fantastic. But to really uh, push it on someone in such a fierce way to force them to, to um, you know, uh, uh, agree with what you're saying, that, that's not how we saw Jesus do it, okay? Jesus spoke the truth, and if people accepted it, you know, that was fantastic. If they walked away... They walked away. Yes. Yes. So, you know, Deb, it, I've, I've harped about this before, but what I want to focus on is that I've noticed in recent years there is a trend of uh, stories about people unplugging from the Internet for their mental health. There's also a lot of stories of, of the depression of young people as they spend all their time online, and it ends up depressing them to the point of, in some cases, suicidality. I know that's extreme, but it does happen. And what I just said is an example of what goes on, where if you take any topic and you take it to the extreme, like, you know, uh, um, anything that you want to imagine, like this one, and we say, like, well, the Internet is completely terrible. Social media is always bad. It always leads to people being suicide, suicidally depressed, I can't believe anybody's using it. Those people, they, they have no brains whatsoever. What the Internet does and social media does, and, and, you know, here we are, these two old people, right? But the only reason I think it might be useful to listen to this perspective is there is a trend of young people saying, this is so depressing, I need to disconnect from it. It's so manipulative and powerful that I can't manage it. I have to disconnect for my mental health. Um, and then also it's leading to depression. So it's not just, you know, the old person wagging their finger and saying it was better in my day and it's bad now. Every generation says that. But what is going on is people are identifying that it's hurtful to the current people coming up. Mm-hmm. And we've been warned by the creators of social media that it's designed to reinforce and encourage extreme positions because that gets a reaction. It's designed to get a reaction. Why? Because the real goal is the eyeballs to be looking at advertisements so that the platform can make money selling the ads. The -hmm. real goal is not to foster civil and nuanced and deep discourse. The real Mm -hmm. goal is simply eyeballs. And so extreme positions are rewarded until the person, even unconsciously, ends up in a very um, polarized extreme position of either A or B of whatever the topic is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and even in these extreme positions, 
there's a lot of people that follow along and they, they, um, cheer that person on or the, that group on to keep going. You know, I, I like what you're saying. Keep going. This is this, you know, very refreshing things like that. There's this strange sense of, of folks wanting to belong to a certain camp. Yes. And, and I don't, I don't quite understand that. I'm, I'm very much of a, a free spirit in that area where I, I don't like, uh, in fact, they, when I was, when we were in high school, they had different groups, you know, you, you belong to this group, that group, mm-hmm. the, you know, the, the athletic group, this group. I was more like a, a floater. I would float from group to group because I, I didn't, I didn't like being stuck in one, in one category and being told that that's how now you have to dress, you have to act, you have to speak, you have to do everything. To me, that, that is so um, restrictive and it doesn't allow room for growth. And I didn't like that. It, it, it really, actually it kind of, it, it, it just, yeah, it didn't work for me. But what I'm saying is we're in this, we're, we're at that same place today. So you're taking that high school mentality, moving yes. it into the world experience today. And we're all going, Oh, I, I identify with this group. Oh yeah. That's who I'm going to follow. Oh yeah. That's the only person I listen to. Oh yeah. And I'm, I'm going to stay away from these people. They're, they're bad people. How do you know they're bad people? I mean, has anybody even talked to some of these people? I mean, this is what I don't understand. Nobody's asking the questions to getting beneath the surface. There are a lot of people on, on podcasts right now that I got to be honest with you. I know them personally. And I got to tell you, some of them are not nice people. I mean, they're not, mm-hmm. they're not, they don't act Christian like they don't, they don't, they're not kind. They're not compassionate. They're not forgiving. I'm just saying from my own personal experience with them, but yet people are like, Oh, this person is so great. I just got to follow this person. They don't even know this person. And, and, and that that's, what's so ridiculous. It's like people aren't thinking on their own. They're, they're, they're identifying with groups of people. People are sinful. People are flawed. People, people are trying to do the best they can, but please don't follow certain people. Follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what you were saying made me think of two things. One, it made me think of the fairly well-known, um, professor of communication and language, Noam Chomsky, who's been around for a long time and he's quite old at this point, but he still gives some interviews. He was known way back in the day for when people would ask him about language and communication on certain issues in politics or in the social sphere, he would refuse to give interviews that were sound bites. And he would dress down the reporter and say, if you want me to give you a 20 second answer to this, I'm not going to respond because this is a nuanced and complex question that you've asked me. And I refuse to give you a soundbite that cannot capture the complexities of what's going on with this phenomenon. And he would do that so frequently that he got less and less interviews, but mm-hmm. he would get interviews on, you know, more, I guess, intellectual or, or highbrow um, platforms and places in terms of writing and speaking. The other thing it made me think of is the Jesuits. Mm-hmm. The Jesuits, part of their philosophy of pastoral work is to work with people where they're at. So instead of judging somebody and saying, oh, you're not a perfect Christian the way I understand Christianity, my particular personal model or flavor that I've decided it's supposed to be, which usually is composed of, I let myself do the things I want to do and, and rationalize them and the things that I have under control. I, I'm outraged that anybody else doesn't have it under control. It's, it's just human nature. So the Jesuits instead want to try to understand the individual first and work with them where they're at. So if you take somebody who's, who's, who's a bare beginner in spiritual matters in Christianity, and they, you know, they know the very basics. Well, Jesus died for sins. I'm not really sure what that means. Um, then his resurrection was super important and it was essential for this, but I don't really get it why that's linked to salvation, you know, but I have a sense of it. Can, can you help me? I don't understand why the resurrection was important. And the Jesuit would say, okay, I'm going to meet them where they're at and talk with them about their understanding and help them to grow a little bit in a healthy direction and grow a breadth and depth of understanding about this instead of saying, Oh, you've got it all wrong. You need to read this book and get yourself straightened out before you speak. And you're stupid. You're going, you're going to the deepest pits of H E double L. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's ridiculous to start talking like that, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and again, it's human nature. It's not, 
wagging a finger and saying uh, the doing the very thing we're talking about it's not wagging a finger and saying everybody else has it wrong it is human nature and we need to realize it's human nature so that we can catch ourselves doing it and we can see other people doing it and then maybe pause and have a genuine interaction that might even acknowledge mm -hmm. hey I'm feeling really dismissed and ignored and you're painting me as this really simple two-dimensional person saying that it's outrageous that I you know I think this idea might be right. Instead of that, let's have a discussion like, well, how did you get to that point? You know, I'll tell you about how I got to the point I'm at. We can share. We're both human beings with minds. Who am I to presume that I've got the only mind in the world that works and right. yours is wrong? Right. Um, yeah. And, and a lot of it comes from the groups. So we're yeah. in a group and we've decided our group is right. Mm -hmm. and everybody else is wrong yeah they're beneath us and i'm not trying to be critical of certain people that are that are in the the podcasting world i mean they're trying to make a living i understand that and i and i respect that i'm just i'm just saying that you know i have i have encountered them in, in various circles and let me tell you is they're not people that i would actually hang out with i just i'm just saying i'm being upfront i'm being very honest everybody wants us to be brutally transparent and honest i'm, I'm just telling you People can accuse me of a lot of things, but one thing they I don't think they can uh, they can really uh, throw on me is the fact that that um, that I'm difficult to to be around. I, I try really hard to respect other people and to you know give them the benefit of the doubt, but that's not that hasn't been afforded to me at times. And so it's very interesting how how things are playing out where people are rewarding, in my opinion, bad behavior when it comes to using social media. Okay, uh, we got to hold it there, Adam. Sorry about that. Um, we're going to send it back to Keith. He'll send it back to us. All righty. Thank you so much, Debbie and Adam. And uh, Debbie, when she mentioned that she used to float around group to group, uh, like in high school, I did the same thing. Did anybody else do that? Like, I feel like I was never like with a, a solid group of people. Like I always wanted to, you know, branch out because there's so many interesting people that I wanted to get to know because I was in all sorts of different activities, sports and and whatnot. Uh, and then when I had my 20 year anniversary or high school uh, reunion, I should say, it was kind of I did the same thing. I didn't even really notice it until like I was driving home. Like, well, I just did the same thing that I did in high school, but it was much quicker because it was just a, a quick little two hour thing. Anyways. Yes, a hundred percent agree with what they're, you know, obviously Debbie and Adam are saying, if you have the truth, but force people to agree with what you're saying, I mean, that's, that's not what Jesus did. And Adam was on point talking about working with people where they're at, you know, that that's the most important part, not having these incredible absolutes. You know, we, we all know that uh, only Sith steal in absolutes. That's a Star Wars joke right there, if that went over your head. I don't know. But, uh, hey, make sure to stay tuned. Uh, coming up right after this break, we're continuing the conversation with Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly having a healthy sense of respect for one another, especially when it's online. <laughs> so stay tuned right here after this break on Morning Joy, where truth matters. Listening to Morning Joy, where truth matters. Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey, and Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly are talking, at least on the second half of the next right thing here, about having a healthy sense of respect for one another, especially when we're ministering to people. So without further ado, Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly, take it away. Okay, thank you so much, Keith. Yeah, I'm fired up as always. See, it's really funny, Adam, how I can be fired up so early in the morning. But I tell you, you know, talking about God and about His people, and really trying to figure out how we we fit in this world and how we can, you know, survive and and thrive. You know, I I thank God that He gave us the angels. I lean on my guardian angel all the time for various reasons, and and mainly because sometimes I think it's very difficult to deal with people in general. People can be really rough on each other, and we see it all the time. And and yet, there's a certain um, element of interest and and adrenaline rush, I guess, where people are are tagging onto it and 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 identifying with that certain group and wanting to and and being fueled by that certain group. I'm I'm nothing against that. I'm really not trying to be critical at all. I'm just saying, please use your own judgment on things, and please 
uh, think for yourself on these things. We, you, if, if you go into scripture, if you know your catechism of the Catholic church, if you understand what the church teaches, if you're trying to be a really good Catholic, please know that you're, you're, you're doing, you're doing good. You don't need somebody else to affirm in a, in an, like Adam was saying, in an extreme way to get you to feel like somehow you belong to, to, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to describe it, Adam. How would you describe it? It's really bizarre to me. I've never seen anything like it in 59 years where people are like, if you're not part of this certain following of this, of this person, you really are, are left behind and you're, you're basically nothing. And what, let me just be honest. They, they've said things on the chats, like you're stupid. How ignorant can you be? You know, you should join us, you know, that type of thing. It's, it's bizarre to me. Yeah. And, I, the word I use is echo chamber. Yes. So so what the Internet has allowed us to do is to go out and find a gathering place of people that have the exact same very specific perspective on an idea that we do or close. And then we can learn to conform to that. And if you're only interacting with that population, even if it's a very small population, pretty soon you have the illusion that this is what everybody thinks and it reinforces the idea if you don't go out and seek all the different perspectives on a topic and get the try to seek out unbiased information of course everything has some bias to it we know that but to seek out a number of sources and perspectives because you can basically get the illusion that everybody is extreme in this way and nobody uh, has a brain at all if they don't agree with this perspective <laughs> because great. these 80 people that I found in this one specific forum all agree with me and we just tell each other we're right over and over and pretty soon you have the illusion that this is the dominant group and in reality it turns out that it's actually a very small marginalized group that without the internet would have never found each other and they feed off each other and amplify the negativity and I guess that would be the kind of the last point that I was thinking about Deb I'm open to others and that is you know the very old saying you catch more flies with honey than vinegar you know when you take the negative bashing position of tearing people down criticizing mocking um, instead of listening to them as human beings with all their complexities and trying to see their perspective if you're always attacking and tearing down and criticizing it will attract people for a short time maybe even a little while, but eventually it gets old, it gets tiring. Nobody likes to hear negativity over and over and over and over. Trust me, I know, I worked in prisons, in right. psychological services. Right. It grinds you down if all you have is negativity eight hours a day. Prison is as negative as it gets, okay? Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be there. You don't want to be in that environment eventually. And so what happens is, you take the negative perspective in podcasting, social media, media, and you attract people for a while because they're like, whoa, these people really have thought this through. They have strong, strong, look at the conviction. Wow, there must be something to this. And then pretty soon it's exhausting and mm -hmm. you just feel browbeaten because it's yet more attacks. And eventually you start realizing, oh, they're really twisting this a little bit. Like that isn't really what was said but they're taking it out of context and they're bashing this person and eventually you get tired and it, and it falls apart. Right. Right. Is, and isn't there a sense of a cult of personality that's being, being, um, you know, um, resurrected in a way, in a sense, which is very dangerous. Yeah, I think so because, you know, almost always, if you actually study things that have risen, had success and then fallen apart that are based on negativity, it takes somebody who has the faculties, you know, um, the savvy to mm -hmm. pull things together and spin it in a certain way and to come across very sincere um, and to do very it skillfully. Very convicted and very yes. honest and very upfront. And they when, seem when, that way, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it is a cult of personality in the sense that not everybody can do that. Not everybody has, you know, gifts that serve well in media or communications. And that's okay. Like... Uh, I can't sing. Maybe I'll learn someday, but you don't want to hear me try to sing. <laughs> I know I don't have that faculty. I can't play basketball. That's fine. There's there's a few other things I can do. But, you know, it, so yes, it, it ends up being more about it's mm -hmm. entertaining to watch this person be mean 
as opposed to the actual ideas. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I'm not I'm really not trying to criticize people. I think people are wounded. I think you got a lot mm -hmm. of wounded people that have open microphones. I really do. I'm just saying, uh, folks, and I'll be I'll be the first one to say I, I have been wounded in the past. So so I'm right with everybody. But I try very hard when I go out there, I feel the strong sense of responsibility to teach. Um, the gospel message using uh, scripture and the catechism and the teachings of the church and to and to really stay aligned with that completely keep my own thoughts out of it and really um, um, get the message out that's why I love morning joy it's uh, when Keith says it I love how strong he says it this is morning joy where truth matters we're speaking the truth now is it going to be so inflamed and, 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 you know, exciting and adrenaline rush and everybody getting their heart pumping and, oh my goodness, I've got to follow this person. This is so great. This is the, this is the unfiltered truth. It's garbage. I'm sorry. It's, it's getting views on, on podcasts and people are making a lot of money, Adam. And that's the bottom line. And I don't think it's serving anybody because you're, you're, in my opinion, tell me if I'm wrong, but we're going to run out of time. It's, it's breeding a spirit of anger. I don't think that spirit comes from God. Yeah, let's, I mean, what are the main things that God does with us in life? The main, one of the, one of the main things he does with us is he forgives us over and over and over and over our entire lives. As long as we repent, he forgives us no matter how awfully we went off the path that leads to God and helps us get back on that path leading to eternal life with him in heaven. So the nature of God is to love and forgive and be patient God works with us for decades in most cases. But it's not lifetimes. exciting, Adam. Let's face it. It's not exciting, exciting and it doesn't, it doesn't um, uh, translate to views. But go ahead. Mm. Yeah. And, and, but there is one place where I think it is attractive and interesting, and I know we're going to close on this, is when you hear interviews from the saints towards the end of their life or things they wrote at the end of their life and their perspective having been on that journey with God for decades and grown and experienced the patience of God and God molding them slowly over time. There is something compelling about that soul who has sincerely walked the walk that long that we all respond to. That's Everybody right. knows who Mother Teresa is. There's something compelling about that no matter what religion you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen to that. Okay, I'm definitely fired up, but here's what I do love. I love morning joy. I love what we do here every single morning, and I hope our listeners get a lot out of it with our wonderful host, Keith Downey. So, Keith, uh, please be our leader for the rest of morning joy. I'll do my best. I, I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, no, they're absolutely correct of what Debbie and Adam are saying. Thank you so much, by the way, for bringing this topic up because it's important. Today and age, everybody has a microphone, like like you said, and – there is there is a heavy responsibility that we don't really think about. Even if there's just one person listening, you do have or you can make an impression. And if you're spouting things that aren't accurate or aren't true or doing in a way that's not charitable, that can have an effect on on people, and especially that echo chamber. You know, it's interesting because there there is an algorithm. And I've seen this uh, on my time on social media. If you happen to just click on someone that may post uh, a, maybe a, a political perspective, you will then, the system will start thinking, oh, you want to see this. So it's going to push that ideology towards you. And you're like, why am I seeing this? Oh, because I engaged, I just looked at that one person's tweet. It's wild. So be careful out there and make sure to catch the episode of The Spirit World coming Saturday, 10 a.m. Central. But coming up next, Pillars of Salt or Pillars of Peace. Stay tuned after this break with Bishop Sheen today. You're listening to Morning Joy, where truth matters. <laughs> 